Synthetic pesticides are expensive to buy for smallholder farmers. Regular use of these pesticides can also be harmful for the farm family, for the consumer, and for the environment. Across Africa, many kinds of common oat plants have also been traditionally used to control insect pests. These plants can drive off and kill insect pests. Using these plants as botanical pesticides can therefore be very advantageous for smallholder farmers. But many farming communities have forgotten how to use botanical pesticides and no longer know the best ways to apply them in practice. Research carried out in recent years in many African countries has shown that smallholder farmers can control crop pests very effectively with botanical pesticides. In those places where I spread these pesticides made from plants, there was a sufficiently heavy crop yield. And also the crops looked clean and had no damage compared to crops where I did not spray. This video gives specific guidelines on which kinds of plants to use and on how to harvest, prepare, and apply botanical pesticides. Many different kinds of plants have pesticidal properties. Different plants can be found in different places, so find out which ones are available in your area. Some commonly occurring pesticidal plants are Fevetia, Neem, Mexican Sunflower, Venonia, Mexican Marigold, Basil, Tephrosia, Sodom Apple, and Blackjack. You may also be able to find and buy commercial preparations made from botanical pesticide plants such as neem and pyrethrum in shops in your country. It is generally best to use the leaves of the common pesticide plants. This is because the pest controlling chemicals are concentrated in the leaves and leaves are generally available in large quantities. Using leaves will cause less damage because the plants can produce more leaves and still be able to flower and produce seed. So do not harvest flowers, seeds or roots unless the plant is extremely abundant, such as neem, or in cases where you need specifically to use roots, flowers, or seeds, such as Sodom apple. As regards these pesticides made from plants, which we are using in our crops, it is better to harvest the leaves. We must not use bark or roots because we will damage the plants, and the plants will wilt completely, and next season we won't get any pesticide. Therefore, it is much better to use the leaves, especially those that are mature, so that we can come back next season and harvest again. When you have harvested the leaves, they can be used fresh, but if you do so, pest control will not be as good. This is because it is more difficult to extract the pest controlling chemicals from fresh leaves. So once leaves are harvested, dry them by spreading them out in a thin layer in a shady place. Do not dry in the sun. Sunlight destroys the pest controlling chemicals in the leaves and the plant extract you obtain will be weaker and less effective. As you can see, I have dried my pesticide in the shed. I put up a roof to stop the sunlight from falling directly on the plant leaves because sunlight damages the quality of the pesticide. Turn the leaves over every few days to help them dry evenly. If the leaves are not turned or spread thinly, they can go moldy or black and will lose the pest controlling chemicals. Once we've spread them out to dry in the shade, we turn the leaves to stop mold growing because mold also destroys the quality of the pesticide. Always store dried plant materials in the shade in a grain sack or other bag. If kept under dry, dark conditions, the plant material will keep for several months and often for up to a year.
A few days before you need to spray your crop, you must prepare the dried plant leaves. The best way to do this is to grind the dried leaves to a fine powder. Pound the leaves in a mortar. Always do this outdoors in the shade and always protect your face with a mask of cloth tied over your nose and mouth to avoid breathing in the plant dust which can be bad for health. Next, <laughs> sieve the pounded leaves through a screen with small holes to obtain as fine powder as possible. Repound any materials that have not passed through the sieve and then add these to the finely sieved powder. This reduces waste. A fine powder is better than a coarse powder. This is because a finer powder helps the pest controlling chemicals to be more easily extracted in water for spraying on your crops. If you have access to manual or electric mechanical grinders like the ones often used to make maize and cassava flour, you can use such a machine to grind larger quantities of plant materials to a powder. If you store the plant powder in bags in dark, dry conditions, the plant powder can keep for a few months over the cropping season. One day before you want to spray your crop, you should prepare the plant extract late in the afternoon. Fill a suitable bucket with roughly 10 liters of water. Many buckets have markers on them showing the volume. Add a small amount of soap to the water. You can use either liquid soap or bar soap. For 10 liters of water, use about 3 small cupfuls or 1 spoonful with this kind of spoon of liquid soap. If you use bar soap, you must cut or shave about 1 spoonful of small pieces so that the soap will dissolve completely in the water. Stir the water and the soap until all the soap is dissolved. Adding soap is important because it helps extract the pest controlling chemicals from the plant powder. Soap also helps the plant extract stick to your crop and to spread out evenly over the crop. If you use a bucket which is larger or smaller than a 10 liter bucket, you will need to increase or reduce the amount of soap to match the amount of water. When you have prepared the soapy water, you are ready to add the plant powder. Measure out 1 kg of dried powder for the best pest control. 1 kg of plant powder is roughly 3 fillings of this kind of common container. Mix the powder well in the soapy water, as you can see the farmer is doing here. 1 kg of dried leaf powder to 10 liter water gives you a 10% solution. You will not benefit if you try to add more than 1 kg to 10 liter water because it is difficult for all the pesticide chemicals in the large amount of plant powder to dissolve in the water. If pest numbers are low or you do not have much plant material, a 1% solution may be okay. You can make this by adding 100 grams of plant material, 100 grams fill a small cup like this one, to 10 liters of soapy water. Defrosia can work well at this lower concentration. But as a general guideline, no matter which plant material you are using, you should normally try to make the more concentrated solution, which is 1 kg plant powder in 10 liters water which as we said earlier gives you a 10% solution. Once your mixture is ready, place the bucket in a secure place in the shade. The extract will be used the following day. Do not leave the prepared mixture for more than about 24 hours because then the mixture will start to ferment and the pest controlling chemicals will be destroyed. The next day, the proper time to finish preparing and apply the botanical pesticide is late in the afternoon when the sun is less strong. This is because if you do this when the sunlight is strong, the sunlight will destroy the pest controlling chemicals in your extract. 
you must filter the mixture so that very small plant powder particles do not clog up your knapsack sprayer or watering can. Place a cloth loosely over an empty bucket and slowly pour the mixture through. You may need to do this twice. Use a coarse cloth the first time. Then pour the extract you have collected through a finer cloth and collect the extract in another empty bucket. Filtering twice is especially useful when you want to make a 10% concentration and will speed the process. After filtering, gather the ends of the cloth together to squeeze out as much of the water as you can from the remaining extract. The leftover plant material can be used as a green mulch around your crop plants where it will both fertilize your plants and suppress weeds. Lastly, pour the filtered solution into your knapsack sprayer or watering can. It is now ready to be sprayed on your crop. Knapsack sprayers are the best way to apply the pesticide because they produce a very fine mist which evenly covers the plant surfaces including the underside of the leaves. Knapsack sprayers also make your solution go further, spreading the solution over a larger area of your crop. However, you can also apply the solution using a watering can or a broom or brush. Many different plants with pesticidal properties have been traditionally used by African farmers for generations. Speak to a knowledgeable local person to find out what species grow near your farm. Make sure you harvest plant materials in a sustainable way. This means that you should take only some of the leaves and make sure that many other plants remain untouched. Do not harvest flowers, seeds, or roots unless the plant is extremely abundant or you need to use these parts specifically. Always dry and store harvested materials in the shade. Sunlight breaks down the pest controlling properties. Grind and sieve dried plant materials to obtain a fine powder, but also make sure to cover your nose and mouth and work outdoors in a well-ventilated area so that you do not breathe in the plant dust. Before adding the plant powder to water, add three small cupfuls or one spoonful of soap to the water. This will help the pest controlling chemicals to dissolve in the water and to make the extract stick to your crop. For the best result, add one kg plant powder to 10 liters of water. This will give a 10% solution, which will work well. Leave the mixture in the shade for 24 hours, but not longer than this or it will ferment and be of no use. Always apply the prepared botanical pesticide in the late afternoon or early evening of the next day. Remember that repeat sprayings are often necessary because these plant extracts easily wash off in the rain and are broken down by sunlight. For further information, see the companion video on the use of botanical pesticide to control insect pests and seek advice from your agricultural advisor.